Evening folks, assuming there are any folks out there, it's usually a little bit of chatter before I, uh, I start broadcasting, doesn't seem to be any today, anybody out there? Hey Mick, how you doing? Uh, let's get rid of the uh, start screen, so you can see what I'm doing. Hi folks, excellent. So that answers a few questions, uh, I can see myself on the screen, there is me. You can hear me, that's good. Uh, okay, cool. I think we're going to crack straight on with this, I think. Uh, where's my glasses? So, a few of you might have seen on um, on Instagram and on uh, various Discords and what have you that I've been working on some Lumineth. Um, I'm working on a nice sort of autumnal theme, like that. Uh, it's a really nice, easy scheme to reproduce. I've been sort of knocking through it on these uh, wardens here, and I've got some. Uh, oh God, what, are they what are they called? They're not called sword masters of Earth, but same sort of thing. Uh, Benari blade lords. There we go. Benari blade lords. Um, who are the bodyguards for the wizards, or oh, some of the little minor single trick wizards that? Uh, the, uh, the Lumineth have because everything and its dog is a wizard in the Lumineth army. They've got more wizards, more wizards than the Zinch army has, and that's uh, that's saying something. So the weekend, the weekend was good. I went and played some AOS with some friends. Um, got spanked um, in the second game where I played my Zinch for the first time. Uh, first game was the longest game in history. Where I learnt that the Sylvaneth have some dirty tricks that I will never be employing because they're too dirty. And they make the game drag and drag and drag. So, yeah, we won't be doing that. We'll find other ways to be dirty. Oh, thank, thank you, Mick. Funds for the funds gone indeed. <laughs> right, okay, I'm going to crack on with. In fact, I'm going to put them aside. I'm not going to work on them at the moment. I'm going to crack on with one of the uh, Venari Wardens, um, Blade Lords, these ones. Uh, let's pick the champion out. I've got the bases almost pre-done. Um, that's, uh, that's AK Terrain's Muddy Ground. Dry brushed with a bit of um, Wraithbone and then hit up with a bit of my brown wash. Yeah, I think it was about seven and a half hours. Yeah, it went on for quite a bit. 
Um, it was the inevitable matchup of, of um, slow and steady and incredibly tough versus very, very fast and not dealing much damage. So, um, yeah, there was a lot of kiting going on. These will end up looking like this, which is... Um, which is a little bit of this stuff, which is Geek Gaming Scenics um, Scrubland Premix, Base Mix, and a little bit of this, which is Elements Essentials Autumn Grass. And that's how you get from that to that. So those pre-made ones are going to be used for my archers. Oh, I should get busy on these though. Um, <laughs> right, okay, I've had applied a little bit of colour to that. That's just a bit of rifle and flush. Straight over the grey primer there. To give that sense of a skin tone. And we start from the inside and work outwards. So the next layer will be a sort of undershirt, which I have been doing. Agaros Dunes. Give this a shake, get this out of the way. I'll keep it nearby for reference, I think. I just don't want to spin, spill paint on it. There we go. Army Painters Regiment Brush. A bit of water on there. Right. Doesn't quite come to a point anymore, but it doesn't need to. This is a sort of a mid grey primer with a lighter grey zenith all over the top. Which helps establish the shades and light values. Not quite as stark as the um, the white over black that I normally use, but uh, I think it really needs to be for these guys. Again, so this is almost slap chop. Slap chop has a, a slightly more sort of heavy contrast to it. That's the uh, the white zenith or, or light grey zenith all over black, and then. All over white dry brush to pick out the uh, the highlights um, and give a sense of edge highlighting, and then contrast over the top of that. And it's really effective. I like it. It's very fast, uh, so I appreciate that. But it's not quite the effect I want for these guys. I want a well, nothing I paint is clean, but a cleaner look. More to demonstrate to myself that I can paint clean if I want to. 
I'm just going to get rid of this brush and use a different one because it's not quite doing what I need it to do. There we are. Again, starting for the, the innermost surfaces and working outwards. Yeah, that's those Sylvaneth. I'm just watching watching chat at the moment. Yeah, those Sylvaneth. Can be nasty if you play them that way. Well, not nasty, frustrating, deeply, deeply frustrating. Um, I think there's a time and a place to play them like that, and every time and every place, isn't that? If that makes any sense at all. If anyone's curious, the tactic involves making judicious use of um, the Dreadwood sub-faction and Strike and Fade with a particular um, words, use your words. Um, yeah, the, the Sylvaneth get to pick seasons that they're fighting in, which have different effects on the game. And there's a particular season that uh, enables the uh, the Strike and Fade to be particularly effective if you've got lots of Wildwood on the board, which is kind of the Sylvaneth thing, having lots of Wildwood. Which can make it seem like, yeah, fighting mist because the strike and fade enables them to, once they've been engaged in combat, to literally disappear if they're within a certain radius of a, a wildwood or a place of power, which is an overgrown terrain, which you, you um, designate at the beginning of the game. You've got three of them on the board before the game even starts. And reappearing next to another one within nine inches and the um, the season you pick which I think is called the reaping stretches that nine inch radius out to 12 inches um, and a lot of some of the the uh, Sylvaneth troops can do that natively which is really really irritating so yeah there was a lot of pinging about and um, not being there when the people struck back and yeah. I can understand why it's very frustrating. Right. Not sure what to do with the trousers on these guys. I'm going to try something which may or may not work. And that's use a bit of Fuegan Orange. Which I noticed as a touch of autumnal pink about it. Yeah, that looks kind of cool. We'll go with that. And the legs. I 
Fuegan Orange is just an ink, and this is straight over the uh, the base coat, the prime coat, primer. And it gives you a sort of a nice washed out orange. Hey, Commander Autism. How you doing? Nobody's late. Nobody's late. You arrive precisely when you mean to. Neither late nor early. Yeah, Mick, I heard you were having a bit of um, a bit of a downer on um, Age of Sigmar, and you weren't really having having fun with your um, Stormcast, were you? I think what you need to do is play me. <laughs> I'll give the joy of the game back to you. <laughs> Still not sure what I'm doing in that uh, Age of Sigma. Because so I don't tend to look at the um, the weird strats that uh, are game winning and, and build armies in that way. I, I build armies according to what makes narrative sense or a theme for the army that I want to be building and just go off that. So it's always a constant surprise to me when people pull out these uh, combos of this, that and the other that auto win engagements. It's just, uh, okay, I hope that was fun for you. It wasn't particularly for me, but you know, whatever. It's got a kind of a peach tone to it, which is uh, vaguely autumnal. Not easy to shift, Joe. It took you two turns. <laughs> In my book, that's an easy shift. I think the entire game took two turns. Unless by I, they were, it weren't easy to shift means you didn't kill them in one go, which is true, you didn't. Twenty of them. But 
But I take your point. I, I think I accidentally hit upon the right thing to do with them, which is uh, buff the heck out of them and put them in the way of things and hope that they reincarnate as um, a Zangor, which is one of the, uh, the Zinch things. They cycle their Kyrak Acolytes into Zangors. Which is why I need some more Zangor. I don't have enough more Zangor. Goats for the Goat God. Huh. I wonder what will happen if I put this on there. Maybe we won't do that. Maybe we won't do that, he says, carrying on. Yeah, I think that looks all right. in the toolbox which is fast becoming a favourite tool for me it's particularly if you're doing wipe that's more tarry and grime and again this is straight over the grey See what's going on there with the orange, I kind of like that, that's good. Mortarian Grime of course is one of the new shades. if you slap it straight down over the grate you'll get a nice sort of sepia off-white going on and once you get some you're losing a lot of contrast on the camera there once you get some um, some Rakarth flesh or um, not, not like our flesh, Bide Witch flesh or something like that. As a highlight on that. And you start taking it back up, back up to the whiter tones. It looks really nice. Which is what I've done there. That's exactly the same. That's um, Mortarian Grime straight over the primer. And then um, uh, Pallid Witch flesh picking out the extreme highlights. Is there anything else of white that I need there? These are, well you know what faction they are surely. These are the Lumineth Realm Lords answer to the um, Sword Masters of Hoeth. These are uh, Blade Masters of something else. Venari Blade Lords, there we are. Or as I like to think of them, Games Workshop's apology for cow elves. Hey Dark Hiver, how you doing? Oh, 
Once again with the Mortarian Grime. Uh, what am I doing with those scabbards? I think I'm going to do what I did with the scabbard on this, which I think was Agoros Dune, so I'll get to that in a sec. Let's get these. So now I've got the process going, I've got to keep going with it. Otherwise I'll end up with that. Uh, Unpainted miniatures at the end of this again. I don't want that. Because Nerd Storyteller was telling me that he'd quite like to see some um, some finished miniatures because he hasn't got um, he hasn't got Instagram. Well, there's an easy fix for that, Nerd Storyteller, <laughs> and that's get Instagram. But I can understand why you don't have it. It's that whole meta thing and. Yeah, I wouldn't have Meta if I could function without it, but unfortunately I can't. So impressed with this um, Mortarian grime as a means for producing off-white that sells as white. So impressed with it. I mean, you wouldn't think it, but it just looks yeah, so cool. It's a little bit of. Have a mistake under there, but it's underneath, and I can fix that with um, a pallet witch flush anyway. So there we go. Pop that down there. Can't stand up before. The problem with doing things with inks is they do take quite a while to dry, which isn't great. thinking for the swords which you can't see at all there those are the metallic variants now these swords are supposed to be made of sun metal which can set people on fire from the inside so I've been working with some various ideas for sort of a magical flamey effect and I'm getting sold on this actually because this is nice and simple, it's just, um, again, contrast, because I'm like that, um, yand and yellow over, over the, the primer, um, pull it away from the tip a bit, and then go over it with this stuff, which is cool. So you get a sort of a metallic gold, but distinctly sort of magical, 
hot looking blade. Of course, that one's growing on me now. That's a bit more involved. Hmm. There we go, Chris knows where it's at. Instagram, it's the way forward. Okay, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna grab this whilst I'm waiting for the um, Mortarian grime to do its thing. Because I've decided these guys are not wearing gloves. So I'm just going to get the Reichlin Flash Shade and I'm just going to fill in straight over the primer and you instantly get Pale Flash. It's, it's like magic. In fact, I don't know. But for the, for, for the slight variation in skin tones it gives you. I don't know why they even bothered producing the um, the various uh, flesh tone contrasts, a Caucasian flesh tone, I should say. do very much fall foul of that. Calling the pinky colours flash domes and the uh, colours it used for darker skin tones, things like bestial brown and gore grunter and this that and the other. It's, uh, it's not a good look but they're getting better. They're getting better. So I'm just going to pull that out. Okay, that's all right. Oh, that's getting there. Also getting there. So what are you guys getting up to hobby-wise? I'm told that a number of you are painting and, and otherwise hobbying whilst watching me or listening to me. So what's on your hobby-esque? And why? Have you just started a new project? Or are you beavering away at an old project?
Oh, so you're just watching me make. That's oddly gratifying. <laughs> Sisters of battle. You doing a full army or? I say Sisters of Battle is one of those ones I keep flicking away at. Oh, Cyberpunk 2077. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. Right. Okay, so I think we're we're slowly drying off now, so this is good. We can start picking away at the yellow. And for the yellow, I'm going to be using Yadden. Not the new one. Not the new one, because I kind of prefer the effect that this one has. It gives you a nice autumnal golden yellow. is traditional so we're just picking out the leg armor and the shoulder pads because the rest of this is going to be uh, actually let's pick out the inside of that thing on the banner as well The way I'm envisaging these um, shoulder and leg plates is that they are boiled leather and they're going to have gold trim to them. But the, um, the chest plate's going to be actual metal. Oh, they've got knee plates. Let's do the knee plates in yellow as well. Draw the brush down to where you want the darker areas. 
and you're working with contrast paints, draw it into the recesses, towards the recesses. You know what, Chris? I'm with you there. There's something about AOS models that are just so damn pretty. In a way that most, not all, but most 40k miniatures just aren't. Um, a lot of these Lumineth are just achingly beautiful. Which is the main reason I've got some of them. I used to have a thing for elves and all things elven kind. And back in the day, I used to have a wood elf army and a high elf army and this, that, and the other elf army. And I played an elf in live roleplay for the longest time. Probably not the longest time now. It's been a while. Um, I've been a while playing something else now. But I think. It's still the majority of time playing an elf. But, um, the whole cow aspect of the Lumineth put me off because I thought that was their direction of travel and it just made no sense to me. Elves with hammers and cow horns. No, what are you doing? Um, but they seem to have rethought that and brought some ba back of some of the uh, the old world high elf aesthetic which I liked Oof. so this is the problem I've got to stand these guys up otherwise the contrast paint won't pull correctly and you won't get the right sort of shadows this is why people stick things to corks I do have corks, but I'm bloody minded and I will persevere. play when my stature um, meant I wasn't able to take myself seriously playing a lithe and graceful elf. I've never, never been particularly lithe and graceful but it comes a critical mass literally where it's just like no dude no it's time you're not a high elf you're a pie elf at this point and there's nothing changing that
This would be much easier if they were attached to bases, Chris. Much, much easier. Um, I find you get bits of damage to the um, the primer by continually handling the miniatures. But if you're prepared to accept that as a cost of doing business, and some people use temporary bases. They super if you super glue your, your miniature to a, a base. It's brittle enough that you can actually just just use a tiny spot of super glue and put and put it on a base, and it's brittle enough that you can take it off the base and put it on your uh, your decorated base later on. But I am an impatient soul. Ultimately, I could do that, but that's time I could be spent spending painting, or you know doing something else I enjoy. I certainly wouldn't recommend this approach to anyone. You're probably losing more than you actually gain. That's normally what I do. I was trying a different approach with this. Because I was finding what I, I usually end up getting the basing material and the glue and all sorts of all over the miniature and it's, it's not ideal. for the all-important painting of the boots. Sounds cool. I should look forward to seeing them at. Uh, I take it you're coming to Paul first. Of 
got to come to Paul first. It's the law. On that note, quick, got a quick blog for Paul first, being organised by tabletop events. Uh, well, being organised by our, our very own Mick the Machine in coordination with tabletop events. Um, a bunch of narrative focused players getting together in Belper in the United Kingdom. Sorry, our American cousins. Although I understand you've probably got other concerns at the moment. Um, and that's coming up on the 22nd, I want to say. Yeah, 22nd, there we go. Uh, I'll be there. That's what a bunch of other, uh, um, say, High Paul's Minions. And it should be, I mean, the past. How many have we done now? It's a blur. Anyway, the previous, uh, say, High Paul events, uh, Paul Fests, have been really good. Really chilled atmosphere. Really good group of people. So. If you're not doing anything that weekend and you can get to Belper and you've got no excuse for being anywhere else, and you really haven't, um, come on down. If you go to the Tabletop Events website, you can still pick up tickets, I understand. Um, they're about 20 quid, I want to say. Fourth? This is, say, High Paul 3, isn't it? Okay, confused. <laughs> ah, yes. There was an AOS event. Oh, I don't remember that. Probably because I wasn't at it. Quid in petrol, 100 quid in petrol down the road. Fuel prices are ridiculous at the moment, I can fully understand that, but you know, if you will live in Scotland and in fairness I can't blame you for that at all. I would live in Scotland if I could. I absolutely would. Slightly more difficult to uh, get down and play Age of Sigma. <laughs> I thought you were in Scotland. Why did I think you were in Scotland? Yes, I would absolutely recommend going and living in Scotland. <laughs> Especially at the moment. And staying there until a certain referendum goes the right way.
You do, that might be why. You do sound very Scottish. I assumed that was because he was Scottish. That's usually how it works. Right, so that's the boots done. Critically important part of the, the, the miniature, the boots. Very, very important. If you don't get the boots right, give up. Whew. Well, I think they're coming along. I mean, that's just a handful of colours, and already they're starting to look a bit sort of autumnal, and uh, yeah, I'm liking them already. Let's keep plugging. Uh, next, we are going to reach for. The base colour from Metals. Pop those over there. And we'll work on them one after the other. If I have one criticism about these miniatures, It is only one criticism, really, because I do generally love them. Uh, it's the, it's very hard to spot which is the champion. There's nothing in any of these miniatures poses, or even okay, normally one's got a fancier hat, and they, as it is actually the case in the, for these guys, it's this guy. But you wouldn't know to look at him. That his hat was any fancier, really, than this guy's. Got a slightly larger plume. What's that? So the chance of you pulling the wrong miniature from your unit because you don't can't really tell which is the champion and which isn't the champion. It's quite high. Right. Okay. Base color for the metals, except the sword. It's going to be Gargax Sewer, another colour I'm falling in love with, because it is so good. Right. Let's move that over there, because I'm left-handed, and I keep forgetting that I'm left-handed. I'm putting the paint pot where I have to reach across myself in order to get to it. He has got three dots with it. instead of one on his blooms, you're absolutely correct. Unfortunately, that's not so easy to see from above and behind. Which is generally where you look at your miniatures from when they're on the table. I have other ways of marking my champions. This guy has a coloured tuft on his thing. I'm going to be carrying that on. Or not. I kind of like those coloured tufts. I might just use them as an extra or terminal note. Gargax Sewer is a brilliant base colour for metals, especially golds and bronzes and brasses, but also for rusty iron and steel.
and it also sells as leather straight out of the pot which is useful Because I'm basing these loosely on the Third Age Elves from Lord of the Rings films, uh, they are going to have gold coloured armour, the metal parts of it anyway. So again what I was saying about the um, the yellow shoulder pads and knee pads and, and um, what are they called, quiss I think, tassets, tassets, there we are, tassets on the legs. in yellow will be uh, rimmed with gold. edges of these um, yellow plates with Gargax sewer which will again form the base for the gold trim but I mean if you want to get these straight onto the table they'll work straight like this I think Oops, I've got some of the Gargax sewer on the jam. No, 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 no. Let's get that sorted out first. It's a ballad witch fresh on top of it. That should help it out. Okay, it wasn't dry. Never mind. Come back to that later. Oh, just noticed there is a bit of metal I am missing. I missed on the previous miniature. And we'll get it on this miniature.
nice, isn't it, mate? I'm I'm happy with it. I think it. Uh, It's different to the usual white and blue or white and red or whatever else. And should I want to play them together, it will mesh nicely with my uh, Silverneth. But as my Silverneth don't really get on with elves. My Sylvaneth, I'm not Sylvaneth in general. Why does my Sylvaneth don't get on with elves? I can't see that happening anytime soon. But the option is there. See about what I mean about Gargax, so it's just oh, what a good color! Such a good contrast paint. It will go nicely with my trees. My trees, I'm quite proud of my trees. I'm assuming you mean my wildwoods rather than my sylvaneth as a whole. Well, I'm kind of proud of both of them, but the recent edition were the, um, the wildwood trees. And for what was literally like 20 minutes paint job, I think they came out quite well. few bits of um, white showing through now but once I've got the um, the brown source into those recesses it won't look so bad and then we can get on with the highlighting and the finishing touches
Sorry, I'm kind of getting into this. But, uh, running out of things to, well, not running out of things to say, but <laughs> losing my mums to say the things I want to say. Well, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun, this. And the miniatures are just working so well for the taking the contrast. I may have an arcane cataclysm box set on, on order, so I've got another load of zinch coming and another load of elves coming. Yeah, I'm not addicted, I can quit any time. I mean, they're kind of fiddly, I guess. Getting the paint into the right place. It requires a bit of confidence, I suppose. So that's ultimately what it boils down to. There's a lot of reaching into crevices and under armpits and all sorts of stuff going on here to get at the areas that need the paint. Which is where a true slap chop style would come in handy because all those crevice areas will already be in a very dark colour and deep shadow by virtue of the chop shop, um, a slap chop method. So you don't need to worry about it so much. So I've kind of shot myself in the foot by uh, doing a cleaner style, cleaner, slower style. But even though it's not actually that slow because it's just contrast and a bit of shading and a bit of highlighting and uh, literally anyone can do this anyone appropriately sized brush and a bit of confidence all you need There's no techniques to this, I'm just slapping paint on. And the fancy uh, contrast medium is doing the rest.
So what is it that's wrecked um, AOS for you, Mick? Was it just for those games at the weekend that sort of knocked the stuffing out of you? Or is it something that's been creeping up for a while? Or what, what's the deal? There must have been a straw and camel's back moment. Camel's back, I stress. Other parts of camel's anatomy are subjects of other discussions. Creeping up for a while. Yeah, sometimes it gets you like that. See me, I'm warming more to AOS than I am to 40k at the moment, because 40k is, uh, I mean there's complexity to do, uh, complexity, to, complexity to AOS, but nowhere near, nowhere near 40k, 40k is just rules overkill. I mean it could be said that there's, they're drifting in that direction with AOS with the, the army rules and such, but I don't think it's gone too far that way. The potential's always there, but I don't think it's where they're quite there yet. No, no, I get that. I get that. I get that. So if you're still coming to Ballfest, or maybe we'll bring bring one of your AOS armies along. I'll play you, and we'll uh, we'll have a have a novice game just for the just for the hell of it. How's that? Because I don't think I've played you yet. Not at not at forty k. Not at um, AOS. Stretch. Oh, right. Okay. I think we're getting there slowly. say I've seen anything particularly quote-unquote ridiculous in AOS yet. There are some very strong creatures and some very strong um, armies generally. And unfortunately I think Sylvaneth with, with their recent battle tone is probably one of those stronger end armies, particularly with their mobility and ability to bomb people with trees. Um, but I've not seen anything truly ridiculous. It's it's just the way some people play, I think. Um, and that's not that's not the system, really. And I think the system lends itself to that style of play. It's just so people play that way. Maybe not. Maybe not even maliciously. Just that's just how it is. Hopefully other people know what I'm talking about. And if they do, they can tell me.
No, I, I, I would agree with that, CA. I think it is uh, it's more intuitive. Uh, once you get your head around some, some core, core concepts, it's uh, just... Um, It's fairly um, fairly intuitive. And there isn't the... Um, the relentless strat and... Um, yeah, there's, there's not the relentless, relentless stratagem spam. Yet. Direction of travel. I get that, mate. I get that. I must say, the sound kicking I got. Um, and the first couple of DZ events I went to, playing 40k, damn near put me off playing. Damn near put me off the hobby again. It's a, it's a hard thing to bounce back from sometimes, especially if you're, you're not in a good place for other reasons. I'm not saying you are in a um, not in a good place for other reasons, but uh, it certainly doesn't help. Um, and the guy I was playing, I don't think he was doing, doing it maliciously, he was just... had been playing for years and he was a competitive player. Um, and he was putting tournaments lists again, against um, me and I'd not played before. So. It was a foredrawn conclusion in that respect. Yeah, I get that. I get that. I think maybe once you get your head around one thing, the other will fall into and the other will fall into place. Hopefully. Nobody wants to see anyone else get driven away from the hobby. At all, ever. And it would be a shame if that's happening. So I'm thinking just play some other people, maybe. If you want to get... But then if you're still playing 40k... Exactly, Chris. I tend to think, think of myself more as a, a painter than a gamer these days. Well, that's all I generally think of myself as. Painting doesn't require quite so much brain power. Right, I've just seen the time. And as is always the case, I mean, I'm making some good headway here. Making some good headway. But I think what I'm going to do is focus my efforts on the champion for now. And I will pop up some... Uh, 
in the next live stream and I'll show you where I got to with the other ones if I well I'll be posting them on on um, Instagram anyway I will definitely be putting up pictures of the entire unit all right okay uh, let's get some of this going on actually no Uh, I know what I need, I need the Agros Dunes. Where are you? Agros Dunes! Agros Dunes, where are you? You would be the thing that the dudes are just leaning up against. the banner. I think I might just leave it white and yellow like that. That is sound advice, damn it. Now there, uh, Dark Hiver. I think that's part of what they, um, what I suffer from actually. And I'll tell you why it is, for me at least, is that I want to be able to have a variety of armies available to me. Um, should anyone want to come round, come round to play? I, I, I need an army that can go up against um, whatever. So I suppose I should really collect chaos and only chaos, because chaos can go up against chaos and anything else. why I tend to collect a lot of armies that and I suffer from the FOMO a bit.
FOMO in this hobby is definitely a beast. Apologise if I just took that off camera, I didn't realise. Right. Get some accent colour going on there. Nice bit of Flesh Terror's red, which is possibly the best red colour they do. And it'll go nicely with the autumn colours. Splash of red on the tassels. Now again, this is me just getting base colours down on the, the miniature. I can sort out little details and things later. Like I might want to put an extra colour on the um, on the plume there. Maybe white or something. Or yellow. Yeah, yellow might work. When I first saw these, I was thinking maybe... Um, a brown and yellow plume but then as everything else is brown and yellow I thought that might kind of get lost and the whole point of a plume is they're supposed to stand out My initial plan, Mick, was to go for one army for, for AOS anyway, was to go for one army for each of the alliances. But that's uh, sort of fallen by the wayside. Because this would be my third order army, I think. I've not got a destruction one yet. Once you've got your four alliances covered, you can play anyone and not be restricted to chaos.
Right. Let's. Where is it? Mystic gold? No. And we're going to use burning gold color shift paint. And we're going to stick that over the. Garagax sewer. Do that again. Keep forgetting I'm left-handed. I should have spruced it out there. That's what she said. Understand how this could be said to be orange and gold. It's more green and gold to me. You know, press on. I like the way it kind of retains that dark undercolour. I do like these colour shift paints, but I will say they go on much better if you spray them, which makes them not ideal for this kind of work, but they look alright. I'm just going over the side of the brush, almost dry brushing the one, but there's a, a fair bit of paint on the brush, so it's not really dry brushing. sort of mystical gold kind of quality to it. It was kind of bronzy on the camera which isn't too bad. As ever, when you're working metallics over a decent base colour, you don't actually need to hit all of the um, hit all of the surface with the metallic. You can just sort of almost pick out accents with it. I have I have actually gone over all of the uh, apart from a little bit there. I could have left that. I have actually gone over all the all the metallic there with that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over it with some uh, Retributor Gold, which is somewhere, just to pick things out.
getting there. to darkness I'm watching them as well they look very cool so this is retributor gold going on over the Garagax sewer on the scales I'm just picking out into each individual scale you don't have to do this this could do this with a um, sweep down with a dry brush I think this looks better the side of our brush to pick out the runes on the, the guy's helmet and some of the raised surfaces just to get a little bit of variation in the gold this is a good good thing to do with uh, with any metallic color is just get a bit of color variation going on sense that the armor is reflecting something else around it in the uh, in the environment it, it, it enables you to get some points of interest in there as well I'm going to have to paint those legs a different colour, I've just realised that looks way too much like flesh. 
Yeah, okay. Hmm. Thank you, Dark Harbor. Oh, I'm thinking about that. I'll get that Aether Quartz gem filled in. And for that, I'm using Pylar Glacier. about them legs what am I gonna do about them legs them legs what look they is look like they is not wearing trousers whilst I'm thinking about it. I think that might be the way forward actually. Get the Agaros dunes. Layer of Agaros dunes over the orange. Make it look a little, little, little less like flesh and a little bit more like cloth. some Fuegan orange over the top of that just to add a bit more interest to it. Just seen a ribbon there. The ribbon needs to be red. Right. Now, where did I decide I was going to with the? Um, what was 
it. still paying attention this is Cassandora yellow just laying that on there and that will pick out all the detail that's dry once I get some once I get some of the gold filter on that that'll look pretty pimp but whilst that's drying I'm gonna get some of the uh, paint and pending which I'm not even sure I can paint and pending it so it's all games workshop paint <laughs> Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, I can't remember what what advice I gave you, but I'm glad it's working for you. Yeah. So this is the brown source, which I'm using to fill in all the gaps and add some definition and shadow, and make everything. I'm being a little bit more selective about where I'm placing it this time. Normally this is a goes everywhere kind of shade. But I don't want it everywhere. Otherwise you lose the uh, the clean and bright feel of the miniature. But what it will do is it will flow into all those um, crevices and things and add extra contrast and fill in all the bits that are still primer coloured and it adds a bit of shading to it as well it's always good spot of um, the brown on the legs is really yeah okay that's cool I like that yeah say so I'm being a bit more selective I am actually being a bit more selective it's just a keep seeing bits I need to fill in thank you very much Still got to go over some of this with the um, pallid witch flush to bring up the white.
I am going to use something I don't normally use, which is a hairdryer, because I want to get this done. Apologise for the noise. Sun metal blade. Love this stuff. So cool. Just going to put so a bit more of this on the uh, on the armor, just to bring up the. Uh, Bring up the luster a bit. Because this filter stuff is properly glossy, properly shiny. Cool, 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 cool. I think we're almost there. That looks like something I can pick off there. Uh, to do something with the bubbles on his hat at some point but I think ah right no stop thinking <sighs> pallet witch flesh this is what makes the white sellers white There, a little bit of water. And just in the upper edges, just raise the upper values. Salah's a much lighter colour. Don't want too much on there. But slightly more than an edge highlight. Creamy white. Happy with that. You guys, you stand there for a sec. Because we're going to get the super glow. And punch the camera, because that's what we do. Super glue, sponge of super glue. Let's 
pick one of the finished bases. To it, damn it. Something I've found about this super glue is it isn't actually that super. Come on. This is when I get myself stuck to the base as well. And there we go. Not very super glue, we're going to go with. <laughs> and because I said I was going to use that red, um, pink, whatever it is. I think it's technically red because it's supposed to be flame. This is from uh, Gamers Grass, I think. In fact, I'm almost certain it's Gamers Grass. Uh, we're going to put a spot there. And we're going to grab a Gamers Grass splodge. Get the uh, with the tweezers. I have a pair of tweezers. I cannot find that there. There we go. And the good thing is, I'm about maybe a half away, half an hour away on the other miniatures as well, and then the entire squad's done and dusted. But I'm up with it. Ooh, 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 ooh. Banner. Good luck, CA. Yeah, I'm I mean, there's a little bit of dressing up I can do there. Um, but, you know, that's more than okay for the tabletop. I think. Yeah. Happy with that. Cool. All right. Okay. Well, thanks for dropping by. Um, I hope you've got anything useful out of this, or if not, you haven't got anything useful out of it. I hope you've had a good time watching. Uh, same back time, same back channel next week, I hope, um, unless something comes up. I'm not anticipating anything to come up, but you know, life's life. Um, yeah, um, I'm guessing all you guys are subbed. If you're not subbed, why not? Uh, if you are subbed, thank you. Um, 
it helps these and supports the channel and gives me enthusiasm to carry on going. Uh, yeah. Yeah, cool. I like him. He's good. I like him. I'll finish off the unit and stick pictures on, on Instagram. But there you go. There you go, Nerd, nerd Storyteller. A more or less finished miniature, start to finish. How's that for you? Don't say I never do anything for you. <laughs> okay, chaps, it's been good. Uh, it's been emotional. I should catch you guys on the flip side. Thanks very much for dropping by. Ta-ta for now.